like a guy who could treat me right. Oh, 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 oh. Boy, take a chance, will you let me ride? Oh, 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 oh. I could be the best thing in your life. Hello you family, welcome back to the channel you guys, if you are new here, you are welcome, my name is Joyce and if you have not subscribed to join the unique family, I don't know what you are waiting for, please go ahead, subscribe to our channel, turn on the notification, join the unique family because over here we are lit and we are doing content. Alright, so today's video I'm going to be sharing a real life story and I feel like I am not in this alone and I feel like I need to share this story to inspire and to motivate anyone out there who is going through the same thing and maybe feeling like they are in it alone so yeah that's basically all it just inspired me who are in the same shoe as me it just like to inspire us so let's get started there's a video i'm going to play now and i'll be back but she's not here but it but i believe that She's actually rooting for me and she's wishing me the best. The video you just watched now was actually filmed on the November 11th and that day I was feeling so down and I was feeling emotional. I was just basically feeling down and I didn't know what I was doing. I was thinking a whole lot to the point of having a suicidal thought. God forbid. Because of her emotional I was feeling that day. Okay, so what happened? Usually every year, especially on the 11th of 11th, that is November 11th, is usually very emotional for us because that is my mom's birthday. And the day that is very hot for, I can remember my mother actually posted it. Actually, that day I didn't remember. I was just having a very busy day, you know, trying to sort out orders and all that. Uh, not until I went on WhatsApp and I saw my brother's updates and he updated that today he's feeling so emotional, he's feeling so down, he don't know why. Not until he checked and realized that today is 10th 11th, that is November 10th. And every year of this November 10th is, is my mom's uh, burial. That was the day she was buried. Yeah, she was buried a day before her birthday, that is on the 10th of November. And she was born on the 11th of November. So that month is a, as in that month, we usually, especially that day, we usually like go into depression, we usually go like study, you know, usually even to the point. My brother said that everyone is sick, and and then he just realized that today is my our mom's birthday. <sighs> I just posted that tears, and that was what, you know. That was what brought about that video. I was in tears, I was crying, realizing that we are supposed to be celebrating my mom's birthday and now she's not here with us. So that is basically what brought to that video. And yeah, I also just wanted to share like a little story of the real life story of what happened to us, the agony we went through after my mom's death. Okay, so my mom died and she was buried after her burial, it wasn't even up to a month. Yeah, it wasn't up to a month, or should I say one month after, and my dad got kidnapped. <laughs> that period was the toughest time in our lives. I and my siblings, my dad got kidnapped, and uh, yeah, basically those people, they were, according to my dad and my siblings, they were four and they were knocking on the kids with their guns and all that, they were threatening that if my dad doesn't open the door, that they're going to shoot. And, oh my God, I don't want to cry, but making this video, okay, fine. That they're going to shoot, so after a very horrible knocking and hitting the door, and again hitting the gate, my dad opened the door. So when my dad opened the door, the first name they were calling is where is your daughter, where is your daughter? And the daughter they were asking about is my eldest sister, her name is Lillian. So that's what they were asking, where is Lillian, where is Lillian? My dad said Lillian is not here because when they were hitting the door and knocking, they were calling her name. So that makes my dad to know that they know us and they know my sister. So my dad quickly asked my sister to go hide under the couch. Um, yeah, so they hid her. So when my dad finally opened the door, they said, Where is your daughter? My father said, The daughter is not here, that she traveled. So 
after searching the house thank god they didn't see her they didn't catch her after searching the house so they finally went with my dad and they kidnapped him so when they took away our dad my siblings they were crying and none of them actually told me they told me the next day and they never told me it was my brother that called me on phone because my brother has left school that then he was still in school he has left school and went back home yeah so when he went back home that's when he called me and asked me that there is something that they want to tell me that i should be calm about it i shouldn't think much about it and i should take it like a mature person I said okay what is it that you should talk to me that I'm going to be fine whatever it is if we can lose our mom and, and then I'm still breathing so what what more and that is when my brother actually told me that our dad has been kidnapped since yesterday night so they haven't heard anything from the kidnappers that I should I can talk to my pastors if I have any so that they can pray like, so that they can also put it in a prayer and I'm like okay I was I didn't actually want it because I made a promise that I wasn't going to cry, I wasn't going to think about it, right? So I had to like pretend as if taking it easily until he hung up the call and I was crying. So my husband asked me why I was crying and I told him that I just gonna go for my brother that my dad is kidnapped. Yeah. So they still didn't hear anything from them. I was just devastated. I didn't know what I was doing like we were just like it's not been actually a month my mom passed on so what kind of what kind of what kind of thing is this what kind of life is this why why is life like treating us this way i was crying so every minute i have to call my brother to know what's good what up have they called has the kidnappers called they didn't get any call from them that day on the two days after that is when they called and when they called it was they did my dad did not give them the number of my brother or my sister to call he gave them the number of his friend to call his friend so when his friend got the call the friend actually alerted us and let us know that the kidnappers has actually called and they said that they want my sister so that they can release him my father is, but my father is being stubborn with them and they were he was hearing in the background where they were hitting him they are trying to make him say give up the daughter they were eating him and he was hearing when he was screaming. So when my dad's friends told us that, my, and also in the background, according to him, in the background, my father was saying that no matter what happened, that they should not bring my sister to them, that they should not let them know where my sister was. So that is it. My father was being stubborn. I said, no, he cannot give my sister to them. That whatever they want to do, if they want him, if they want money, they should say. But if they want to see my sister, like, he's not going to release my sister today. So I went to church and I told my pastor, they fasted, I was praying, I was called on the altar. What you prayed for me and my pastor let me know that they, everything is going to be fine, that they are going to release my father, they are not going to kill him, and my sister, they, they will forget about my sister. So after the prayer, I went, I went home and then I called my brother and I told my brother that I've just, you know, spoken with my pastor, they've prayed for me, I even went to church, the whole church has prayed for me, prayed for us. So, yeah, so my father's friend said that we have to follow my dad's instruction not to allow my sister to come anywhere close to them. In fact, that my sister should leave that house, that's our house, and go to somewhere else to stay. So that is what we did. And then after like about two days, they called and then they called because according to my dad that they were having the, the kidnappers they were for that they were having misunderstanding among themselves. The other was saying, Why are you looking for your sister? The other was saying, Let's collect this money from this man. They were having misunderstanding and they ended up saying that they want money and they told my father to call whoever he wants to call or to bring them 3 million naira and that is it that is when they mentioned the amount they want that they want 3 million naira and my dad said he doesn't have 3 million naira so they argued and they beat him to the point that he actually called us and he's called, he called his friend because he's through his friend he used to communicate to us 
So he called his friend and he told his friend that he should bring three million naira to them. And guess what these kidnappers said? That when they are bringing the money, that they do not want to see him. They do not want to see any other person apart from my sister. That my sister has to be the one to bring the money. My father said no. That if they want to kill him, they should kill him. That if it's the will of God for him to die in their hands, then let it be done. That he's not going to bring my sister. So what did, what, why did they want my sister? That is how my father was being to them. And my father said he was saying those things with confidence. He was saying those things because he knows that he was praying and saying those things. He wasn't just talking those things. He was saying it with the confidence that God puts in him. And at the end of the day, they collected the three million dollars. My sister did not go to get it. It was my uh, daddy's friend. My dad's friend is the one that went to give them the money. And my dad was released. So their main motive, because according to my dad when he came back, of looking for my sister, is that one of them asked my sister out, but my sister refused. So he wants to rape my sister with his friends. That was their goal. God forbid, God forbid evil. Like people can be very, very evil, very wicked. So that was their goal. When my dad caught home, did you see my dad? This, this they gave my dad injuries all over his body and he was he was taken to the hospital where he stayed for about two weeks. They gave him a very huge injury because they were looking for my sister. But guess what happened? It was an happy ending. Guess what happened? Their cop feud because they tried to frustrate us, they tried to make life miserable for us. We just lost our mom like about a month ago and they trying to make life miserable for us. Guess what happened? They didn't go free because they were caught. Yes, the four guys were caught and they were bond. <laughs> oh, when I heard this news, you guys need to see how I was dancing, how I was celebrating and jubilating. <laughs> yes, they were caught. How? How were they caught? So they went to stay at the one Mopo's man house. When they went there, the Mopo's man, the, Mo, the man uh, poured one acid, and that one was the one that is holding the gun. He poured that one acid, and the other ones, he shot two, the two other ones in their legs. Yes, so that is how they were caught. Uh, next day, the Mopo man brought them at the junction of the road, and the junction he brought them, people were gathering. People we are people we are gathered, right? So it happens to be that my sister was going to the market that day. So my sister was went there to, to see what is happening. So it happens to be that that those are the guys that came to kidnap in our house because they were making confessions. They say that they've they kidnapped a lot of people, that they've killed a lot of people. Thank God they didn't kill my dad. That they've killed a lot of people that did disagree with them, that did not bring money and they done a lot of things, they rape a lot of girls, so that is how they confess. they confessed and after their confession they died because they put fire on them and burned them, so yes, that is it, they confess that they had one who is terrorizing the whole community, they are the one doing all the kidnappings that been going on, they are the one that have been doing all that. That is how they died. They were born to death. Yeah. And I am glad that it ended that way. And the reason they were caught, don't you think, is because they wanted to frustrate us? Yeah. They wanted to frustrate us because we are already in pain. We are in agony. You know, with my mom's death, that is still very fresh to us. And they are coming to cause more pains to us. God exposed them. Yeah. Because I fasted, I remember I fasted for seven days. I did a dry fasted for seven days over this praying for nothing to happen to my dad. But thank goodness that at the end of the day, everything happens. My dad is still, my dad is alive. My sister is alive. We are okay, and those people they are not going to be found because not in their grave, and they died early because those guys are still very young, very very young people. That is it. So that is actually basically what I want to share with you guys and this story I am sharing is like I think it's like to inspire you to inspire someone out there who is going through some type of pain 
I don't know whatever pain or whatever thing that the person is going through in life just always you know pray to your God and have faith that everything is going to fall in place and yeah losing my mom and a month later my dad been, my dad got kidnapped it was not a good day it wasn't a very good memory but it is still stick on me that whenever it's getting to the time my mom that my mom like this period of time especially in November period is always very difficult for us but at the end of the day I thank God for good health to thank God who made it possible for my family and I to be among the living to still be very strong and healthy yeah that is basically all I hope my story inspires someone just keep pushing keep doing what makes you happy keep uh, living up if you are someone maybe you lost your mom at a very critical time in your life don't worry don't give up keep pushing keep going your mom is proud of you wherever she is she is proud of you so don't give up and don't give up on life because you lost your mom because at some point i was actually thinking of how to rotate my own life thank god i never did because it would have been the worst thing that would have happened to my fam my family you know yeah, so that is it guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. My love, yeah. You give me love I never see, yo. Oh. My love, yeah. Your love means so much to me.